Hi, I'm April, and you're watching the Android Authority channel on YouTube. Amazon has fanned the flames for the 7-inch tablets market and has recently unleashed a newcomer to that raging market, the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7. Apple II has just joined the 7-inch race with its newly released iPad Mini. Does Apple's tablet have enough water in its bucket to douse the flame of the Kindle Fire HD? Watch the rest of this video and find out. At first glance, you can tell that the iPad Mini looks taller and wider next to the Kindle Fire HD. Though housed in metal, the iPad Mini is lighter. It is also thinner. Both tablets are very easy to hold and carry, primarily because of their small form factors. But for me, the thickness of the Kindle Fire HD is perfect for a comfortable grip. Its soft touch rubber back also helps with the grip. It has a more solid feel to it by virtue of its thickness and weight. The iPad Mini, on the other hand, is a delight to carry because of its light weight, but I feel that it is dangerously too thin for one hand to grasp firmly. Its metal back does have some slight texture, but I don't think it helps with traction. The front of these two tablets are all black glass, bezel, and front camera. On the iPad Mini, there's the extra home button at the bottom. The touch panels are protected by tough glass. I'm not so sure about what glass covers the iPad Mini, but for the Kindle Fire HD, it's Corning and Gorilla Glass. These two tablets have enough protective cover against scratches. Notice the differences in the bezel width. On the iPad Mini, the bezel is narrower on the left and right sides. If you hold the tablet like this, your fingers can easily touch the screen. But this tablet has thumb projection technology, so that seems a non-issue. These sides are actually thicker, which suggests that the iPad mini is intended for landscape use. The Kindle Fire HD has even bezels, so I can rotate it any way I want without worrying about my thumbs touching the screen. Notice the location of the front camera. It's here. This is a strong suggestion that the tablet's main orientation is landscape. Take a quick look at the back, and you'll get more confirmation that it's supposed to be used in landscape. On the iPad mini, you can find the volume buttons on the side. Apple has split the buttons into two separate buttons rather than put them on one volume rocker. This one's the side switch for either muting the sound or locking the screen orientation. The power button is up here on this corner. The microphone's here in the middle, and the headphone jack's here at this corner. On the left side, there's nothing here. On the bottom side, this one's the non-standard charging port. You plug in this non-standard lightning cable here if you want to charge the tablet or connect it to your PC. These two, of course, are the loudspeaker grills. On the Kindle Fire HD, the microphone is here at the top side. Let's look at the right side. Most of the control buttons are here, just like on the iPad mini. Here's the headphone jack. This one's the volume rocker. And right next to it is the power button. If you hold the tablet like this, you'll find the power button dangerously within easy reach of your hand. But it's not easy to accidentally press it because the button is flat and doesn't protrude. This one here is a portion of the loudspeaker grill. On the left side, there's nothing here but the other speaker grill. On the bottom side are the micro USB port right here for charging using a standard micro USB cable. Compared to the charging port on the iPad mini, this one is standards compliant and not proprietary, so you can easily use the micro USB charger cable from your other devices. This one here is a micro HDMI port for use if you want to connect the tablet to your HDTV. The backs of these tablets are very distinct and very beautiful. The iPad mini has an aluminum back with very light texture though it easily attracts fingerprints and smudges, as you can see here. The back camera is also here. It's a 5 megapixel shooter. On the Kindle Fire HD, the back is soft touch black matte rubber. It makes the tablet easy to grip, though like the Apple tablet's back, it is also prone to fingerprint smears. This band here is made of metal, and on both ends are the loudspeaker grills. Now let's take a look at the screen and display. I'm not sure which of the two displays I like better. They both look very lovely to me. The diagonal lengths of both are quite okay. The iPad mini has a 7.9 inch screen, while the Kindle Fire HD has a 7 inch screen. Both can render high definition images, but they do differ in resolution. The Apple tablet has 1024 by 768, and the Kindle has 1280 by 800. Because of its smaller screen size, the Kindle Fire HD has a higher pixel density. 
resulting in a much sharper and crisper display. Colors are bright and vibrant, as are on the iPad Mini. The Apple Tablet, though, appears to have better contrast, so the whites look whiter and the blacks look blacker. Regardless, the displays on these two tablets didn't make me frown. These two tablets come with very powerful processors, though both are still using dual-core CPUs. The one on the Kindle Fire HD is a Texas Instruments OMAP 4460 clocked at 1.2 GHz and with 1 GB of RAM. On the iPad Mini, it's Apple's own A5 chipset clocked at 1 GHz and with 512 MB of RAM. You can get either 16 or 32 GB of internal storage for the Amazon tablet, while on the iPad Mini, you can get 16, 32, or 64 GB. Nope, no microSD card slot. The Kindle Fire HD's powerful screen and processing hardware provide the smoothness and responsiveness in the user interface. It's actually more fluid than the previous Kindle Fire, though some areas show very noticeable lag and jitter. In contrast, I found only very little lag, close to none at all, on the iPad Mini. Both tablets have batteries with a capacity of 4400 mAh, which generally provides about 10 to 11 hours of power under moderate use. The Kindle Fire HD uses lithium-ion, and the iPad Mini uses lithium polymer. We did a quick and informal battery test. After two hours of heavy use, with brightness at maximum and with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on, each tablet had only 64% of its battery power left, so it appears even between them. Until we felt the back covers. The Kindle Fire HD turned slightly warm as expected, but the iPad Mini became hot. Uncomfortably hot, according to a colleague of mine. You can connect to the internet through Wi-Fi on these tablets. The iPad Mini, though, has a variant with LTE connectivity. It's coming out this month, according to sources. Both also have Bluetooth. In our tests, the Kindle Fire HD was super friendly with its Android friends, but the iPad Mini was really antisocial. We tried to make them shake hands via Bluetooth, but the iPad mini said that the Kindle Fire HD was not supported. You can also transfer data through a USB cable. On the iPad mini, you'll need Apple's proprietary non-standards compliant lightning cable and plug it into this proprietary non-standards compliant lightning port. I'm not sure how easy it is to buy a replacement cable, but if this were standards compliant micro USB, like this one on the Kindle Fire HD, you can easily use your other phone's cable. So, big plus points to the Amazon tablet for sticking to standards. And a bag full of additional points to the Kindle Fire HD too, for this micro HDMI port for connecting the tablet to an HD TV. If you want to take photos using your tablet, you can do so with the iPad mini. It has a 5 megapixel bag camera, which is actually very snappy and actually captures good quality photos and videos. The Kindle Fire HD doesn't have a bag camera at all, most of us here at Android Authority are very happy that it doesn't. Main reason is that we have almost no use for a back camera on a tablet. We only need a front camera for video calls. For photos or videos, we use either our smartphones or our digital cameras, which capture better images than the iPad mini can. Secondary reason is that the absence of a camera also lowers the cost. We are not willing to pay extra for a hardware feature that we don't need or that we only use once in a blue moon. But the back camera on the iPad mini can be very handy during video calls, especially when you want to switch to the back camera so you can show what's in front of you. So on the iPad mini, you have two cameras for use. On the Kindle Fire HD, you have only one. As for multimedia playback, both tablets play high definition videos excellently and fluidly. The Amazon tablet's video player gives you only basic playback controls. On the iPad mini, you get a film strip of scenes that you can tap to jump forward or backward. Sounds from the loudspeakers are quite good, though I lean more towards the richer bass on the iPad mini. The Kindle Fire HD has an option for Dolby Digital Plus to enable surround sound and improve audio quality greatly. As for the software and the rest of the user interface, it's a huge elephant of a discussion, so let's just have an overview of some of the highlights. The Kindle Fire HD is an Android tablet. In fact, it is running Android 4.0.3 ice cream sandwich. Though Amazon has altered the user interface drastically to make access to Amazon's online stores easier and more mobile. The tablet is primarily meant for use with an Amazon account and makes it easier for you to switch between PC and tablet using only one Amazon account.
Even before you unlock the tablet, you'll be met with ads from Amazon partners. The ads look nice though, but if you want out, give Amazon $15. The home screen itself is optimized for quick access to digital products and content from Amazon. This strip of links here is your gateway to Amazon products and services. Let's see what happens when you tap a link. Here's the book screen. It's arranged in some sort of grid that looks like shelves. You can see the books stored in your cloud account or books that you have on your device. This link here opens the Amazon bookstore so you can shop for more books. Let's go back to the home screen. This carousel here shows icons of your most recently opened apps. You can swipe to the left to view them. Depending on what's in focus on the carousel, this dynamic bar here also changes. The star here opens your favorites panel. Notifications can be viewed by pulling down the notification menu, but the Android notification menu on the Kindle Fire HD allows you to dismiss notifications one by one, or dismiss all notifications at once. Toggle buttons are also available here, and this plus sign here brings you to the settings menu. As you can see, the Kindle Fire HD's interface is deeply integrated with Amazon stores and services. The interface is quite easy to use too. Let's now turn to the iPad Mini. The default operating system is iOS 6. Like all other Apple products, this tablet is also integrated with Apple services. In fact, you will need an Apple ID to be able to use the tablet and access Apple services. Unlike on the Kindle Fire HD, the Apple tablet's lock screen does not show ads. It can even run a slideshow of the photos in your gallery through this picture frame button here. The home screen is a simple grid of app icons. Apple wants you to be able to access your apps right away, so this interface is perfect for that. Compared to the black-themed Kindle Far HD home screen, this home screen gives you more colors and some degree of personalization. At the bottom is a 3D dock for your favorite app shortcuts. Just long tap on an app icon until the icons wiggle and drag the icon to the dock. You can also move app icons around. For music and video purchases, your one and only source is iTunes. For books, you have iBooks. For apps, your one and only source is the App Store. You can't install third-party apps on this tablet unlike on the Kindle Far HD, which does let you sideload third-party apps. One of Apple's stars is Siri, a voice-activated virtual assistant. The Kindle Fire doesn't have a similar assistant. You can talk to Siri if you're bored or lonely, and Siri will respond to you. You can instruct Siri to search for info, compose an email, and do other tasks. You can even dictate messages for Siri to convert to text. Another thing that makes the iPad Mini more likable than the Kindle Fire HD is its keyboard. The Amazon tablet provides a very simple functional keyboard, although with strong word prediction and spelling correction. Though the keys are easy to reach with the thumbs, the iPad mini allows you to split the keyboard so the keys are closer to your thumbs. Thumb typing, that's a very good interface decision on the iPad mini. Like the Kindle Fire HD, the iPad mini also has a pull-down notification center. It's simple and efficient. Notifications are grouped according to app. On the Kindle Fire HD, you can flick individual notifications to the side to dismiss them. You can't do that on the iPad mini. You can't even dismiss all notifications at once on the iPad mini. On the Kindle tablet, you can. As for security features, both tablets allow you to log down your tablet with numeric or alphanumeric passwords. You can also set restrictions to what tablet features and apps can be accessed. The iPad mini, however, has a security feature that the Kindle Fire HD doesn't. It's called the Find iPhone app, which allows you to locate, lock, and wipe your iPad mini if you lose it. There is no denying that both the iPad mini and the Kindle Fire HD have an edge over each other depending on the consumer base you're looking at. For those who fancy themselves stylish, the iPad mini won't fail to deliver with its 5 megapixel back camera, solid but classy design, and slightly flexible but efficient interface. If you want to fully utilize your Amazon subscription, the Kindle Fire HD is a handy device that will provide the ease of access you need while you're away from your computer. It is also a cost-effective alternative if you don't want to buy a laptop or netbook just to access Amazon or go online. Which of these tablets are you thinking of buying? The iPad Mini or the Kindle Fire HD? Share your thoughts in the comments. Also, check out AndroidAuthority.com for more Android news and reviews. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
This is April from Android Authority. Thanks again for watching. May the light side of the Android Force be with you.